Hey guys, Robert with 3D Printscape. So today I'm going to show you how to use materials in Cura. The process isn't difficult and there's a lot of benefits around setting some of the presets and costs that come with uh, each of the filament types. If you're only using PLA, it might not be very beneficial for you unless you're trying to just get an estimate of cost, which I'll show you all of that. Um, but if you're starting to switch between different filament types like ABS, PLA, uh, TPU, or whatnot, um, there's definitely a lot of benefits just because it has all of those saved for what you're using. Now there are some in there by default, um, but most of the time you're going to have to add your own. I'm going to go through the process of adding a new filament for the Hatchbox PLA that I typically use, uh, so I'll show you that process as well. Uh, if you have any questions during the process or would like to see any additional videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join me on Discord and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump over to the computer. Alright guys, so we're here at Cura. The first thing I'm going to do is show you where the materials are at. So if you click on this box here, you can see the materials. That's where you can choose uh, what material you want to use. And most likely you have it set to PLA right now, which is the generic PLA. If you click on this drop down, you can go to manage materials and it's going to bring up the preferences menu under materials. All right, so the first thing I wanted to bring up in here was under print settings. These are going to be the settings that are controlled by the materials. So if you were to switch between the materials, it's going to override the settings you have in your profile with these settings here specifically. Uh, some of the ones that are uh, manufacturer specific that they have included, they wipe out some of the settings you have over here. So I tend not to use those. If I'm creating a new one, I'll just duplicate the old one and then just make the changes I need on that one. But if you look here, like the default printing temperature for uh, PLA is 200, build plate 60, and then your fan speed is at 100. But if you look at TPU as an example, it's 228, uh, zero on the build plate, 100% fan speed. Um, and then uh, some of these other ones, they change pretty drastically just going between what the materials are. Um, so it does help quite a bit. Uh, it kind of gives you that good starting point. And then back over under information, you can add the actual filament cost. Um, you're going to want to change uh, the currency to match what you use. So if you go under general, you can change the currency. I'm just going to change out the dollars. It doesn't really make a difference, um, but that's just what I'm used to seeing. All right, so back under materials, you can see now updated that, and then you would enter the cost for your filament. All right, so here's an example. I'm going to go ahead and walk through creating a new one for the Hatchbox PLA I just bought. So I will just go ahead and duplicate this. Um, discard changes, because that's part of the actual profile, not the material. And then go ahead and rename this. I'm just going to do uh, Hatchbox PLA. And then brand is Hatchbox. And then you can change the color here and uh, it will change what actually shows in the uh, build plate, which I'll show you here in a couple seconds. Let's just go with uh, black because that's the color I bought. Um, sometimes your settings will change between colors, so that does make it easier to know what you have on. And then my cost, I'm going to use my cost after tax. So that was $25.91 a kilogram. And that's a thousand grams, so make sure you have that set right. And then that gives me my cost. All right, now that we renamed it, we got to go find the profile again. It's under the filament brand that you set up. So I'm just going to go to that and then select PLA. And then we have Hatchbox PLA. Uh, and then the color we set up with the cost. And then if we go under print settings, we can go in and change those. Uh, 200 to 205 is what I typically print out with this filament. Uh, so I'm going to leave it at 200 and build temperature. I leave at 60, uh, 175 is fine for standby. Uh, the retraction distance, you can change that a little bit if you need to. I think in my main profile, I have it set to six. So I'm going to change that from 6.5 to six. I know some people go a little bit lower with that as well. And then the retraction speed is fine at 25. All right. So now I'm going to close this. As you can see here, change the filament color to black, and then we have that selected. If I go and select one of the generic ones again, it's going to change the color back to whatever was selected in that profile. Um, now I'm just going to select the one we just created again, and then it goes back to that, and then it's going to update all of the settings over here that were in that settings tab uh, with what you had defined, just so that it's consistent. 
So it set my retraction distance to 6, 25 on the speed, and then temperature to 200 and build plate to 60. Uh, now let's go ahead and slice this. I'll show you one other thing real quick. Here you can see that it added the cost now. Uh, that's what it's going to estimate the cost to be in filament. So that does not include power, but that's just your filament cost. And if you go up to the info, it breaks down uh, that a little bit more into what percent of the filament is going where. Uh, so as you, this was 26 grams, so it would be about 67 cents of filament. If I was to increase the infill, um, let's just say I made it like 50%, which I wouldn't actually print at, but just to give you an example of what it would do to the cost. Now you can see here that it changed the cost to $1.06 to account for the filament difference. Uh, so that's kind of neat if you're just trying to gauge how much it'll cost to print something. Again, that doesn't include electricity. That's just the cost of the filament. Now, if we went and looked at some of the, I think it was East Sun ones as an example here, you can see that selecting it does change your profile. It sets it back to not support it, and it just put in all the settings that it had. Uh, so I typically try to avoid these. They might be good for that material specifically, but it doesn't mean it's going to work well with your printer. Uh, you can give it a try if you're using that filament. It's just not something I tend to do. Um, but at a high level, I mean, that's an overview of the materials. If you're just using PLA all the time in the same brands, uh, what I like to do is just put a couple of them in there that I typically use and then switch between them just in case I have any uh, setting differences. So if you create a temperature tower uh, for the two or three filaments you use the most often, then you can have the temperatures already defined for that material each time you go to use it. So that way you don't forget. Uh, it's just making things a bit easier and it's not complicated. Uh, so I figured why not? Uh, I think it's pretty useful. Uh, if you guys feel differently, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know. All right, so that was the process of using materials in Cura. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the process isn't difficult. It does provide you some cool benefits like the cost and setting some of the preset temperatures and such. Um, and it also can allow you to change the color so that when you're going through it, you know what you're working with. Um, the preset ones aren't necessarily the best unless you're using that specific filament type. And ge the generic ones get you started, but if you're going to be using the same type of filament all the time and you know what your temperatures are going to end up being, it makes sense to go ahead and just create the profile for those. It doesn't take long and it can save you a headache in the future. Uh, if you have any questions about the process or would like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave me a comment below or join us on Discord and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.